All right. Hey, how you doing? And good evening to you all. This is the Shy Rise Show brought to you by the Inglewood Enterprise Gallery. Thank you for joining us today, this Thursday at 5.30 p.m. We are the Inglewood Enterprise Gallery, located at our new location, 1200 West 35th Street. You can always give us a call at 773-719-9848. And you can always check out any updates on our website at www.inglewoodenterprisegallery.com. And you can always send us an email, trust the old email, enterprisegallery at gmail.com. That's enterprisegallery at gmail.com. All right. All right. Yes, indeed. I hope y'all having a great evening. And I actually was able to drag me a guest or two up in here today. So I hope y'all happy for that so you don't have to just listen to me rambling on all afternoon or evening. But um, this is my guest. Queen Zenobia. And Queen Zenobia, can you say hi? Hi, guys. All right, all right. Yeah, totally. Um, man, Queen Zenobia is a very good friend of mine and associate as well as a fellow artist. And if you know anything about the Inglewood Enterprise Gallery, we like to network as well as highlight different artists as well as community development, um, thing, things related to community development that are going on in our communities, especially the Inglewood community as well as all communities that um, have needs that need to be met. You know, underserved, impoverished communities. Um, the motto of the Inglewood Enterprise Gallery is to uplift humanity using arts and creativity. So that's like what that. we like to do, like as well as Queen like Zenobia that. here. Yes, yeah, indeed. Yeah, absolutely. You know, as a performing hip-hop artist, you know, I like to use my craft to uh, inspire the youth to basically empower themselves. You know, uh, you know, everyone says, yeah, go to college and get a job, but you could go to college and make a job. Indeed. You know, yeah, Indeed. Yeah, some Indeed. queasy philosophies. Uh, I love what the Inglewood Enterprise Gallery is doing. Uh, they're allowing a group called NPDUM, the uh, International People's Democratic Uhuru Movement, and uh, we're going to host a movie viewing there. Um, it's not actually a movie. I guess it's a documentary. It's mm. literally, guys, it's literally called the Black People's Grand Jury. Mm. And what happened was is after supposedly they gave us that Mike Brown verdict, we went along and we went to Ferguson and we did our own black grand jury and actually it was a good process because I learned a lot about the grand jury that I had never learned before and also it let me know that just because some people say that someone's not guilty does not mean that they are really not guilty and it was like a community coming together to basically uh, unite and, 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 and bring our own verdict to our own community. Uh, amazing. You know, yeah, I like definitely that. amazing. Yeah. I like that, Queen Zenobia. Um, remember, also, if you would like to call in, this is a live show at this very moment, please call us at 312-738-1060. Man, um, so tell me, Queen Zenobia, that yes. sounds very interesting, and many of us, including myself, may have never heard of anything quite like that. So, why would black people need a grand jury? Well, I mean, it's currently now, this current, if you go to court, the uh, jury is not a, a base of your peers. And they say that. Then they try to get a few peers, like, so there'll be 12 people on a jury. And they say half supposed to be your peers and half not. Nowadays, black people go to jail and there's three people on the jury that's black. And then other eight, nine people, whatever is other races or what have you, and they're not really supporting to understand whatever that case may be or whatever the details may be. So they might be trying to throw them under the jail. Mm, hold so, on, hold on, hold on, hold on, Queens. No. Yeah. Hold on. Are you trying to tell me that black people might not always get a fair share in the judicial system? Is that what you're trying to say? I on yeah, live TV? I, I am saying <laughs> the truth, okay? This is 2018, it's October, it's fall, and yes, that's what I'm saying. Amazing. Uh, uh, yeah. Uh, Amazing. I almost wrote a song about it, shoot. But oh, you know. man, right, right, right. So. Also, one, one amazing thing about you and your art form, Queen Zenobia, what I love is that you're not only a, a, a poet as well as a spoken, I mean a poet as well as a hip-hop artist or a spoken word artist, but you also engage in community development, um, community upliftment, community service, and you um, engage in social enterprise. So tell me, 
how is it that you combine social development and your art form? Uh, that's just like a daily life. Social development, my art form, wow. Uh, <laughs> wow, I mean, you know, it's like every song I write is inspired to move the masses. Community, okay. you gotta move the community, you know, so... Uh, like here's a uh, an inspiring African verse right here. It goes like this: hmm. As a woman, I stand on this planet as an African, an African. I love the motherland, but why are we so distant from the natural resources that are uplifting? Affected by the slave trade, transatlantic ocean where graves are made. People trying to get paid from the cave. I'm mad. I rave. I shave. Ritual rites of passage and be brave like a pharaoh. It's in my melanin and bone marrow. I'm tight like an arrow. Tribe of Shaka Zulu, Uhuru, the Bantu, how you do? Back in the days, crew, Queen Zenobia coming through. Ethiopia and Menelik too. Mansa Musa, royalty, spoil me with comedic royalties, cause I utter words like shea butter. See, that's mm. just an empowerment right there. If yes. one of them words, these my, my fellow peers don't even know what I'm talking about. Right. So I wanted them to pick up a dictionary and learn some new vocabulary. Wow. You know? Wow. That is amazing. And that's just what I was about to say. Just listening to what you were expressing, you know, it's social commentary. It's, uh, it's history. You know, it's uplifting. And we in the information age. A lot of times, you know, uh, many of us like to sit up and play Candy Crush and look for Pokemons on our phone and all that other stuff um, when knowledge is power and much information is just seconds away from us at the tips of our fingers. If we just utilize the technology for something that is empowering as well as enlightening. You know, that's like a whole five volumes, ten volumes of an encyclopedia. I agree. Yeah. You know, encyclopedia, that's a blast from the past, right? Absolutely. You know, young, you know, twenty somethings and under, they don't even know what an encyclopedia was. But that was Google. <laughs> yeah. You know? Yeah. Encyclopedia <laughs> that was Google. everything. Yep. Yeah, and again it's book world of records. It was like right. Guinness Book World Records, encyclopedias, going to the library to do research, spending hours and hours and weeks to do that twenty page paper. Yes, 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 yes. So, um, Queen Zenobia, yes. the, pla the Black People's Grand Jury, yes. that's actually taking place at the Inglewood Enterprise Gallery's new location, 1200 West 35th Street. That will be on November 17th. Correct. So, um, to stay in tune with that, to come see what it's all about, you know, peek in and see what, what this grand jury is about, what we may be able to learn, you know, and all of these things, feel free to check out our our uh, website www.inglewoodenterprisegallery.com also you can check us out on Facebook at Inglewood Enterprise Gallery uh, on Facebook and you can always check out our email as a matter of fact if you send us an email um, we are working on a new newsletter right and when you send us an email, we will actually have you uh, plugged into our new newsletter that we will be dispensing. But it's a secret, so don't tell nobody. We know how people love secrets. So the newsletter is a secret, but if you email us at enterprisegallery at gmail.com, we'll put you on our new newsletter for our new secret, uh, on our new listing for our new secret newsletter. Now, I know that people are wondering, where did Queen Zenobia <laughs> just go? All right, but like I said, I was actually able to drag two people in here as guests today. I ain't even have to pay them, you know? But the Inglewood Enterprise Gallery, you know, that's what we like to do. Now, how you doing today, sir? I'm doing excellent. All right. And yourself? Excellent, excellent. This is my buddy John right here, and John is also an artist as well, a spoken word, inspirational, um, and I'm very interested in seeing what John has to say for today. <laughs> <laughs> Tell us a little bit more about yourself, John. Well, I am an inspirational speaker, songwriter, and author, and my music helps to empower others by getting them to tap into what's already there, their magnificence. I never tell people what they should and shouldn't be doing because they already have a most magnificent life. I just add to their magnificent with my nuggets of information. Yes, nuggets of information, like gold nuggets. Mm -hmm. this is you true. know what I'm saying? In raw form. This is <laughs> That's true. awesome. That's awesome, John. So, um, man, so you actually joined us at our last uh, 
third Friday's open studio over at the Inglewood Enterprise Gallery yes, at our new location, 1200 West 35th Street. That's all actually 35th and Racine, okay? And also, John will be joining us once again uh, later on in the month. Funny enough, this, uh, the month of November, uh, the third Friday happens to be on November 16th, which is actually my birthday. It's a blessing to be here, all right? As well as the day before the November 17th uh, engagement of the Black People's Grand Jury that will be going on at the Inglewood Enterprise Gallery. But, um... We'll be doing some networking. We'll also be doing some inspirational, uh, inspirational discussion and things like that. So, um, would you would you like to grace us with any more words of inspiration, John? Because I know you are you are walking <laughs> wealth of inspira uh, information as well as inspiration. Okay. I'll give you a poem that I wrote back in 2006. Fear and doubt are all so crazy. If it keeps up, it'll make you lazy. Being scared and walking down slow, if you don't put your plans in motion, things will not flow. Fear and doubt are unnecessary mechanisms because as long as you have goals and dreams, you will not experience hopeless cataclysms. Mm. <laughs> That's what's <laughs> up. That's what's up. We got to keep dreaming. We got to keep dreaming. That's, um, that reminds me of something that I like to um, say, the importance of... Um, imagination you know and how powerful the imagination is in our lives um, and that's why creativity is important um, you know as people go from childhood and get older a lot of times they get away from their creativity you know but the creativity is actually what helps continue to develop technology and other things you this know whether it be architects engineers innovators who create new things for us that did not exist before it takes imagination and the ability to dream this you know true. about things that don't yet exist <clears throat> One more time, um, we are the Inglewood Enterprise Gallery at our new location, 1200 West 35th Street. You can also check out our website at www.inglewoodenterprisegallery.com. That's inglewoodenterprisegallery.com. Also, um, man, magnificence. Give me a few ways that we could tap into our magnificence, John, if you might have any other Well, ex ahead. actually, strangely enough, I, was, I took a lift over here, and the gentleman that I was speaking to, he kept mentioning the word hard. He was like, it's so hard to do this, it's so hard to do that. I was like, brother, look, hard puts you in a state of mental paralysis. Mm. Instead of saying hard, say new or different. And he was he, his reply was, well, I need to change. I said, no, you don't need to do nothing but breathe. I said, allow. So how the creator works with me is I use different words to activate how we can live our lives like a child. Because I'm like water. Water don't catch no attitude. It's whoop. It's in and it's out. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> so when you can talk easy, everything is greasy. <laughs> mm, yes. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. Now, um, something else that um, you enlightened me on. Um, we were sitting up talking one day, and we got on two vision boards. Oh, yeah. And you pulled one out that you keep with you. And I think you might have been talking about the importance of having them in different locations. Yes. At home, I have in my apartment, I have a big vision board that's whatever size. And I took a picture of it using my digital camera or my phone and I printed it out and made it into an eight and a half by 11 sheet so I could look at. And what it does is my buffet. When you go to a buffet, you're always eating a variety of food. Well, vision boards are like a buffet of information that comes back to you telling you how you would like to see your future to be. So if you're talking awesomeness in the present, then tomorrow you develop that more and more and more. That's that's why you'll never hear me say, I am stupid, I am depressed. I can say, I feel sad, I feel depressed, because a feeling can come and go. But if you associate the I am to lower vibration, there won't be any elevation. Mm. So my vision boards help me to stay grounded on my magnificence. And if I have a moment where I'm going, oh my God, it's time for a nap. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> Sometimes we got to give things a rest, huh? Most definitely. That is interesting. That's interesting. Um, so you are a poet, uh, spoken word, inspirational um, and speaker, a singer. and a singer, a yeah. musician. Yes. Okay. Okay. Uh, in instruments. A little bit of the piano, a little bit of the tuba, and the bass drum. Okay. And in, in my mind, because I'm such a creative maestro genius, I have melodies that come into my head all the time. So now I can notate the melodies. Mm -hmm. I can tell what key they're in. So if I'm working with someone that's uh, has a greater understanding of music, I can give them the format, and they can take it to the next level. Okay. Okay. Cool. Cool. Now um, I know you're also an author, right? Yes. Okay. So as an author, would you have any words of advice for other aspiring authors to kind of move their process forward and things that they could do that would be helpful? Yes. Rushing takes too long. Slow down and pay attention. Mm. And also remember, don't be moved by what you see. See what you want to move. Mm. And understand being lazy doesn't have to make you crazy. You can be lazy and allow the material to come through to you and keep yourself in a childlike mentality. Because when you're in a childlike mentality, you play with everything. Don't ever become an adult. Because an adult is closed-minded and judgmental. When you stay in a childlike, you listen, to, you listen to the creator talking to you and the words will flow effortlessly. Interesting. Interesting. Like letting the creator work through you. In exactly. Because we're vessels. Yes. Yes. Oh, and even when you're writing a book, or no matter what you're doing, remember that your health in this body is very important. Don't be so focused on the money and the outcome of the product that you don't take care of this product called the body. Because there's no way you can write a book or spend any amount of money if you are shaping all like this. So keep that in focus. Some type of healthy regimen, whether it be a walk or going to bed early, washing the dishes, making up the bed. Mm -hmm. Keep exercise as part of is your regime constantly no matter what yes yes yeah that's um that is interesting because oftentimes we get caught up in um everyday life the rat race as uh, some people call it and we find ourselves so absorbed that we actually neglect our health as well as our mental well-being we put ourselves in um stressful and, um, yeah, stressful situations <laughs> because uh, our livelihood may depend on it, whether we're dealing with people who have issues, you know, uh, mental issues that they want to pass along to you. Let me do an exercise with you. It's something that is interesting. You said stress. Touch my hand. Mm -hmm. Okay, you can touch my hand, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, touch stress. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't exist. Right. It's a lie. Whenever you're stressful, you're faithless. When you become faithful, you're stressless. So when you put energy into this illusion called stress, then your life becomes a mess. So it's just a matter of taking time to breathe, realize that everything is okay, do less. If you got nine things on your things to do list, take it down to three. Mm -hmm. Take it down to one. Don't do nothing. Right. I mean, again, I'm going to say this one more time so people can get this. Whenever you're stressful, you're faithless. When you're faithful, you're stressless. Wow. Stressless is the way to be. Exactly. Yes, indeed. <laughs> That's why I like messing with you, John. You always got some some, some good um, soliloquies or whatever you, they bro. call them. Drop you. on the people. Them nuggets. Dropping jewels, as we like to say. Thank you. <laughs> That's what's up. Well, once again... We are the Inglewood Enterprise Gallery, located at 1200 West 35th Street. For those people who might have missed it a little earlier, you can always check out our website at inglewoodenterprisegallery.com and please feel free to send us an email at enterprisegallery at gmail.com. That's enterprisegallery at gmail.com. Man, we've had a very uh, enlightening show today. A lot of nice guests and I really appreciate it. I appreciate your participation at home. Before we uh, get off the air today, one thing that I always like to do, a lot of people um, may not have seen some of uh, what the Inglewood Enterprise Gallery does. We are a creative co-working space. We like to promote um, cooperative projects among artists. We also engage in public art as well as programming in schools um, and a lot of different creative and uplifting things. Remember, our motto is we like to uplift 
humanity using arts and creativity. But instead of me just telling you about it, I always like to pull up a video because a picture is worth a thousand words so that maybe you get the opportunity to actually see some of the things that we do at the Inglewood Enterprise Gallery. So just check this out right quick for me and feel free to call in and let me know what you think. Audience has questions, so... Yeah. So, what kind of lifestyle do you live and do you plan on changing that lifestyle in the future? Yeah. Uh, Alright, so like, the way, the way it is set up, people stereotype like 16 year olds, like teenagers period, to be like, feel me, gang members because we live in Chicago. But, like, um, the lifestyle I live is not really like, um, I'm hanging out on the block and, you know, selling drugs and all that, even though I got dreads and may look like one of those things, but that's not what it is with me. I'm just a rapper. I just, you feel me, be back and forth to the studio, you know, and just making music. I want to pursue, like, this, this, this rap thing in a way that, People will like acknowledge me in so many different ways. Like I, I'm, I'm versatile, so you know, people. I want people to look at me as like a role model. Some powerful words spoke by one of our youths uh, in our youth business network over at the Inglewood Enterprise Gallery. I like to play little uh, clips like that, highlighting some of the positive things that we uh, have the opportunity to do with our young people um, in the community and see <clears throat> how we can spread positivity to the young people and give them hope uh, by offering them options and alternatives to um, things that may surround them or they may feel like they're surrounded by bad choices as opposed to good ones. So, um, what you think about that, John? Well, I'll say this. What comes to mind is an old Chinese proverb when you are, and I don't say dealing with young people, healing with them. Seek first to understand, then to be understood. So if you take out a moment to listen to them, they will absolutely listen to you. We as the elders sometimes like to push our thoughts and beliefs on on them when give them a moment to speak when they're heard you'll hear some wisdom coming through them as well and that way it'll bridge this illusion called the generation gap which also does not exist wow interesting interesting so the get the generation gap it don't exist. No. It's, it's, it's an illusion put in place because sometimes the elders and the young people have their thoughts. And the gap only comes about when they're not listening. When they're not listening, it's this. Mm. And that's why it started off with the old Chinese proverb, seek first to understand then to be understood. Take a moment, even if you don't agree with what the people are saying, the young people, listen. Because when you listen, the beasts will calm down. They'll be like, oh, okay, dude is listening to me, or, or the lady. And then once they know that you're hearing them, they will be so much more perceptive to listen to you. And remember, they're children. We're children. Don't, like I said, don't let yourself grow up. Mm -hmm. When you tap into the child of you, you'll talk to child in them. And what do children do? They play all the time. They don't fight, they play. Mm. Interesting, interesting. I think that um, that is that hits to a very, a very powerful idea and that a lot of us just want to be heard. Right. You know, um, when you have people that react or respond in aggressive ways, you know, sometimes that's a reaction to not being heard when when it could have been dealt with before a point of aggression. Absolutely. If we could have had a meeting of the minds. And that seems um, real powerful, like, like relationship discussions between uh, men and women. I found that, you know, men and women have very very stressful relationships amongst each other but a lot of times when you put the two the two groups into a room and they actually able to discuss they have a very strong meeting of the minds and a lot of people walk away um, very enlightened because you don't know what's going on in the mind of, of somebody else man we actually got a caller the last 30 <laughs> seconds I got a minute I got 25 seconds caller how you doing thanks for joining us listen answer to that young gentleman just just said that there's no generation gaps. Kids, hello? Yeah, we're right here. Yeah, kids do, don't play. 
If you think kids still play, look outside. Drive past a park. You don't see children playing anymore. Children is a big generation gap. They don't do what we used to do. Mm. It's a great big difference from then to now. So you saying there's no generation gap, just look around you. Just look around you. There's a big gap. And what we need to do is try to narrow the gap. Yes. Hey, I'm, I'm sorry. They're going to they gonna cut me off and run us up out of here because I'm 15 <laughs> seconds over. But I appreciate your call. Feel free to give us a call next week. They finna run me out of here. Thank you for uh, calling. Thanks for checking us out. We appreciate you watching TV Channel 21, Inglewood Enterprise Gallery. Y'all have a great day.